Welcome to the iHeart Latin channel, lesson number 13, where we are introducing verbs of the fourth and final conjugation. Now, if you're using the Henley curriculum, you'll notice that when verbs of the fourth conjugation are listed in your vocabulary, they only give you the first principal part. So that would be the first person singular present indicative active. So let's take a look at this verb right here, audio. It's a verb of the fourth conjugation, meaning hear. So this first principal part literally means I hear, I am hearing, or I do hear. And at this point, they're confident that if they give you a pattern to follow, you can construct the other three principal parts on your own. Most verbs of the fourth conjugation follow that very predictable pattern. If for some reason they don't, your curriculum will tell you. They'll list all the other three principal parts for you. But most verbs do follow that pattern, so um, you'll know how to construct the other three principal parts by following these rules. What you would do is you look at that first principal part, you would drop the IO, that would give you your stem, so AUD. To construct your infinitive, you would add a long IRE. To construct the first person perfect indicative active, you would uh, add a long IVI. And to construct your participle, you would add a long ITUS. So let's take a look over here. I've put together the four principal parts uh, using that pattern. So that gives us audio, audire, audiwi, auditus. So let's take a look at how the fourth conjugation and the third conjugation are similar and how they're different. Now, if you've memorized um, kind of the idiosyncrasies of the, the third conjugation, so you know um, the third conjugation in the future tense doesn't follow the same pattern as the first and second, meaning we're no longer using the bo bis bit, bimis bit as bunt endings, um, then the fourth conjugation will be real simple for you because it's very, very similar to the third conjugation. So let's just take a look. So here we have um, audio conjugated in the present tense. So we're doing something right now. I hear, you hear, he, she, it hears. We hear, they, oh, sorry, you all hear and they hear. Um, and you'll notice that it's very similar to the third conjugation if we compare right here. Um, with the only exception being there are a couple long I's instead of short I's. So there's a long I in the second person singular, the uh, first person plural, and the second person plural. You know, notice over here in the third conjugation, all of the conjugating vowels, all the I's are short. You'll also notice that the ending to the third person plural is I-U-N-T, not U-N-T like it is in the third conjugation. So that's really the only difference in the present tense. Let's look at the imperfect tense. You'll notice that it's, again, very similar to the third conjugation. We find this long E, our conjugating vowel, in the imperfect tense. However, um, you'll notice that the fourth conjugation has an extra I in there. So I kind of like to think of the fourth conjugation as the I plus conjugation. You know, if you think about the conjugating vowels in all the conjugations across the board, the first conjugation is an A, second conjugation is an E, Third conjugation is an I slash E, I or E, depending on what uh, tense you're conjugating. The fourth conjugation, like I said, I like to think about it as the I plus, the I plus E. Um, so that's really the only difference between the fourth and third conjugation in the imperfect tense. If we look at the future tense, again, it's the exact same thing. <clears throat> We've just added an I to all of our conjugating vowels here in the future tense. So, you know, over here we've got metam, metes, metet, metemis, metetis, metent. Over here in the fourth conjugation, we have audiam, so there's an extra i, audies, extra i there, audiet, audiemus, audietis, audient. So hopefully you've done the memory work memorizing all the third conjugation endings. That's going to make it easy breezy for you in the fourth conjugation. One thing really quickly before we translate the sentence behind me. When you see Latin verbs listed, they give you a couple of different um, bits of information that are really important to memorize. They'll tell you what conjugation the verb belongs to, so these two verbs happen to belong to the fourth conjugation, and they'll tell you whether the verb is transitive or intransitive. Now this is different from English. In English, most verbs uh, can be transitive or intransitive depending on how you're using them in the sentence. For instance, if I say I fought, in that sentence that verb is intransitive, there's no object receiving the action of my fighting. If I said I fought a battle, that verb is transitive because then there is an object receiving the, the action of my fighting. It's not that way in Latin. A verb is either transitive or intransitive, and they stay that way. They don't change. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to say uh, I came a distance, I, I couldn't do that in Latin. I'd have to say that sentence differently. Because this is an intransitive verb, uh, it can't take an object in the accusative. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, it's important to memorize not only you know, all four principal parts, what conjugation the verb belongs to, but also whether it's transitive or intransitive. 
Okay, let's look at the sentence behind me. The Romans were constructing long roads. So if I was going to translate this sentence into Latin, uh, where do I start? I always start with my subject. So who or what is this sentence about? It's about the Romans. So this is my nominative. Is Roman singular or plural? It is plural. Is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? The word for Romans, it is masculine, belongs to the second declension. And Romans, is that first, second, or third person? This is a third person verb, or sorry, a third person nominative. Uh, and so what do I do next? I find my verb. So what's, what, what are the Romans doing or being? They are constructing. So here is my verb. And I know that I have to match my verb to my subject in number and in person. So if I have a third person plural subject, I need to use third person plural uh, personal endings for this verb. And can I answer the question, the Romans were constructing who or what? Yes, they were constructing roads. So this is my direct object. My accusative is roads singular or plural. It is plural. Uh, is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Um, well, the word for roads is via, vi. And so um, this would be feminine, right? First declension. All right, what about these other words here? Well, I don't have to worry about the word the. In Latin, they don't translate limiting article adjectives. So we don't have to worry about that one. And then what about the word were? Well, in English, that would be a helping verb. Um, and so when I think about these two verbs together, we're constructing, I need to ask myself, is that present, imperfect, or future tense? Is it happening right now? Did it happen in the past with this idea that the action is kind of ongoing? Um, or is it happening in the future? Will it happen in the future? Uh, well, we're constructing. That tells me that it happened in the past and perhaps it's ongoing. They were constructing long roads yesterday and maybe they're still constructing long roads today. So we'll use imperfect tense right there. And then what about the word long? Well, does it answer the question, what kind of roads, long roads? Yes, indeed it does. So this is an adjective. And what's my rule for adjectives? They have to match the thing that they're modifying in gender, number, and case. So they are talking about the roads, long roads, right? So if I've got an accusative feminine plural uh, form here, I need an accusative plural feminine form here. Okay, so let's put this all together. So what word will come first? Usually my subject in Latin will come first. So um, what is a nominative plural second declension uh, masculine ending for Romanus Romani? It would be Romani. My verb will come last. What word is gonna come next? Uh, is my accusative, my direct object gonna come next or the adjective gonna come next? Uh, remember my rules for adjectives are adjectives of quantity come before the thing that they're modifying, quality go after. So is this an adjective of quality or quantity? It's an adjective of quality. It's describing what kind of roads, it's not saying how many. So it's gonna come after the accusative. So we'll put the accusative next. So what is an accusative plural feminine ending for the a, the i? It would be the as. And now I have to match my adjective to my accusative. So I need an accusative feminine plural ending for the word long, which is langus a um. So am I gonna use first declension feminine, second declension masculine, or second declension neuter endings? I would use first declension feminine because I need to match it to the accusative. So it would be long gas. And finally, I need to figure out how to conjugate my verb correctly. So we're constructing. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to decide what verb I'm gonna use. So constructing, what is my word for constructing? It's munio, munire, muniwi, munitus. Um, normally that verb means fortify, but when you're using it with uh, viam or vias, it means construct. So this is the verb I'm gonna choose. Now the fourth conjugation follows the same pattern as the first, second, and third in the way that you find your stem when you're ready to conjugate. So not to be confused with how you construct the four principal parts, when you're actually ready to conjugate, it follows the same pattern. So you'll look at the second principal part for the imperfect tense, so present, imperfect, and future all follow the same pattern. Look at the second principal part. You would drop the I-R-E. So in that way, it's the same as the first, second, and third. You're dropping the ending of the second principal part. And that would give me my stem, which is M-U-N. 
And then I need to think about that conjugating vowel. So remember that um, in the imperfect tense, the conjugating vowel that I'll use is an I and an E, so the I plus E. So that gives me I, E. And then I just need to think about my personal endings. So my third person plural imperfect endings would be bomb, boss, bot, bombus, botus, bont. Which one am I gonna choose? Well, third person plural would be bont. That's how that sentence would look. Romani, vias, longas, muni, bont. And that is it for this lesson. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as humanly possible. Be well, voilà.